Yeah, I think that's a good way to think of it. So here's the, the picture of the um, correctly functioning camera. supposed to make the light rays converge into a point uh, and so that they converge on the retina. Well, a well-focusing camera is supposed to create the image on the film. So we want, uh, so this would give us a focused image on the film over here. So this is the well-functioning camera. Uh, and now we want to think about what would happen if we put the object too near. Now, if the object is too close, does that mean that by the time they reach the eye, does that mean that the light rays will have converged too much or too little? Too much. Because they can't see it closer up. So the object is very close to the eye. Does that mean that there's a lot of time for the light rays to converge before they reach the eye or not very much time? Not much time. Does that mean that they're probably going to converge too much or too little? outside the eye. Too little. Too little. I think that's maybe the opposite of what your first thought was. But because they're very close to the eye, they don't have much time to converge. Um, and as a result, are they probably going to converge too soon or too late? Too late. And so the picture would look... The picture would look like this the light rays are not converging until they get theoretically past the film, which is not allowed. On the other hand, if the object had just started, if the light rays had just started further away, even if they came in at the same angle, notice I'm trying to draw them from the same angle, but still they would have converged a lot more. So it would be a lot easier now for the film, for the camera to make them converge in the right place. So with this little picture here, we can see um, that when the object, when the object is too close, the problem is that the rays have not converged enough, uh, and then the camera can't make them converge enough. Now, if the camera just um, was more flexible, it could bend the eye, it could bend its lens even more to make them converge. But there's got to be a limit on how flexible the lens is. So eventually, we get to the limit where it can't bend the lens anymore, and then you can't move the object too close without blurring the image. So if the object is too close, that means the rays are converging too late. I forgot what the question was. Oh, so the important thing is you want to draw an image that shows them converging too late, not an image that shows them uh, converging too soon. Um, here's another way you could have gotten the right answer. Um, is, this, is this person having a problem that's, uh, is the camera having a problem that's like nearsightedness or farsightedness? Farsightedness. This is like being farsighted because they're having trouble seeing something near. Well, we just have our memory aid that, remember, a farsighted person has the trouble that the light rays converge too far from the lens. And that would be a memory aid that would give us this picture as well. OK. So we really can't use the eye analogy because the camera really is supposed to operate a lot like the eye. It looks like they drew that same picture here. Here it was converging in the right place, and here it's not converging in the right place too far away. OK.
have it all memorized as the eye, so. With Farsi and Miss Hughes. Yeah. So you would need a con, or something, a converging lens? John so Lucas? So you use the eye as a memory aid to figure that out. Um, but for credit, you might have to give more explanation. Why does it make sense that we need a converging lens here? Because you need to help the rays converge faster. Yeah, if we got part A right, we should be able to get this part right. The problem is that it's taking too long for the rays to converge. Um, so we need to put more converging power uh, in there. Okay, that's right. So, um, so your answer is correct. We would need to add an additional convex converging lens. Convex lens, lens needs converging, like you said. Okay. All right, he goes on for like two pages with an explanation here, but let's see if we can cut that down. So. So this is going to be a multiple lens situation. What if, do you have a special name for the corrective lens? You just call it the corrective lens. You just put another lens in front of it. So that's our corrective lens. Okay. So first of all, we need to draw the object that, for the corrective lens. So where should we put the object for the corrective lens? So, the break. Well, my first question is, where should we put the object for the corrective lens? What distance exactly should it be at? 60 times. 50 times? So 30 centimeters. Yeah, we want. This distance to be 30 centimeters. I guess we're putting the lenses right next to each other. So the distance between them is pretty much negligible. So 30 centimeters from one lens will be pretty much 30 centimeters from the other. All right, so this is what we could call here object one. All right, now uh, let's see here. Now, where do we want the image to form from object one? Where do we want, now we have two lenses in a row, where do we want the image from the corrective lens to form? You're right that we want the image from the camera lens to form on the film, but where do we want the image from the corrective lens? To form at the end of the lens. Go back and think about this like an eye problem again. What was the whole purpose of the corrective lens? To help it converge faster. Right. Um, so to help us image an object that's closer than normal. Mm -hmm. So think back to corrective lenses. Um, where is the image from a corrective lens supposed to go to correct your vision? Where is the image supposed to go? Um, the image is supposed to go where, where you're like having trouble seeing it. So. No, not, not really. You want to put the object um, at where you want to see. Remember, this is an important slogan to go back and review, more important than this particular problem. Remember that the eye, even when the eye is defective, it still has a near point or a far point at which it works. So you want to put the image to where the near point works? We want the image from the corrective lens to be at the actual near or far point here. So in this case, we're having trouble seeing something near, so we can focus on the near point. So um, we want the corrective lens to put the image um, at, the, cam uh, at, the, at the, the camera lens's actual near point. So 60 centimeters? That's right. So that would be out here.
Okay. Now, like I said, that's actually more important than this individual question. So the idea is, again, remember, the eye or the camera can handle it just fine if it's looking at something that is at its near point. So the whole purpose of the corrective lens is to create an image that's at the actual near point or far point, and then the camera lens or the eye lens can take it from there. Okay, so we're going to take this object that is too close, and we're going to create an image that seems like it's coming from the actual near point, and then the camera will be able to handle that just fine. 